Chris in Chicago, you're up. All right, Nate, uh, it's an honor to speak with you. Our uh, backgrounds are, are more similar, I think, than you'd ever know, less me be, not being a vet. So thank you for your service. Uh, I hold you in extreme high regard. Um, your story is so inspirational. And and I attribute it or, or liken it to Pat Tillman um, or for me, someone like Steve Gleason. So, um, you know, it, it's just an honor once again to speak with you. The real question I want to ask you is, is what's it like to be on the Pat McAfee show? Um, but <laughs> it, it, nobody else really cares about that. So I'll, I'll ask something that will benefit the group. Um, you know, it, my similar uh, experiences, having been an athlete, and I actually got to coach against Augie Garrido at Dishfalk Field. So uh, you, you'll know uh, what I'm speaking about. Uh, you know, I want to talk about or ask you about your mental health and, you know, your experience of being a Green Beret and, and maybe some of the trauma that was experienced there and certainly the concern of CTE and whatnot in, in football. Uh, I just had a friend who who won a Super Bowl with Peyton Manning and the Colts uh, when they beat the Bears in 06, uh, take his own life, sadly, and they attribute it to CTE. So what's your thoughts on, on that uh, altogether from a mental health perspective? Yeah, I mean, that's a complicated question for sure. I, and I'm no doctor. Um, and I know that 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 stuff does have an effect for sure, for absolutely. Um, but there's also, you know, a lot of people out there that don't experience CTE or that do experience CTE that don't uh, necessarily experience suicidal ideation or um, struggle as much with mental health. So it's it's interesting to, like, to explore that. What What is what is the bigger reason? I don't know. I mean, is it the loss of purpose and brotherhood and, you know, all of these things that also go with transitioning out of sports or is it more the physical, physical injury, you know, the head trauma? Um, it, it's probably both. And it's probably the answer is typically lies somewhere in the middle, but it seems most of these people, the stories that I've heard, um, there was, more at play than just the injury. You know what I mean? There was, uh, there was, there was that as well. It probably exacerbated things and, and made it, made it, uh, brought you to the place of hopelessness. Cause that's what that feeling must be when people make that decision. And I've lost quite a few friends. Um, I've lost more people from the military veteran community that I have, than I have, uh, from, uh, that I have, I've lost more of them. Sorry. I've lost more of them here at home to their own hands than I had, overseas when I was serving and that's generally the um, the narrative uh, today you know in our country like through this 20-year war that we ex recently experienced we didn't lose that many troops overseas as compared to prior wars not even close um, and that's good that's not a bad thing that's a good thing I mean we have better protection you know it was a different type of war um, we have better uh, life-saving capabilities now and all of these things but at the same time we've experienced a, or experiencing a, a an uptick in people coming home and struggling and taking their own lives and you know how much of that is attributed to the physical injuries versus mental you know i don't exactly know but I, but i i would venture to guess that um all of those people or at least most of those people and this is my assumption or estimation or maybe it's a a bit of a um um it, it's a bit of of um just th through so many conversations and experiences like uh, what am i trying to say it's not data i actually have you know what i mean i'm not uh I, i'm not like i said i'm not a doctor i'm not a scientist and i don't i don't i don't know but um, I, I would I'd venture to guess most of those people dealt with quite a bit of uh, mental health yep. struggles, you know, and, and feeling um, like I am a burden to this world, you know, whether that's my family or my friends or whatever, it would be better off without me. And it's not just the physical pain, you know, of, uh, you know, of an injury or, um, anything like that but it's wild to see i mean there's other there's other diseases like uh als you brought up steve gleason he's a really really good friend of mine als for whatever reason is very common in 
combat sports, you know, people that play combat sports and like, they don't understand why yet exactly, you know, but that's, that's wild to, uh, to, to, to think about and to wonder, like, is it, is head trauma, you know, is that related? Um, one of my other heroes from the 49ers, uh, Dwight Clark passed away from ALS a few years ago. And I met him in 2000 and I met him in 2016 or 17 and pre-diagnosis, you know, and he was, looked great. And by, by, I think by 2020, he was gone. And so it's just, it's really, uh, it's really, truly really heartbreaking to see that stuff. And, but you know, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's a very hard question. I don't exactly have the answers, but I think, uh, it is, there is definitely correlation, um, between between both and what what we focus out on at MVP and and what I definitely focus on is yeah those things we can't we we maybe can control a bit more which is the focus on the the mental health piece of it specifically and um yeah what what uh, how to pull each other out of these places.